Hello friends, welcome to the land of Kek Yak. My name is Laurel. Today's video is on homeschool history. Okay, so if you've watched previous videos about what we use for history or our family subjects, you'll have heard me talk about the Good and the Beautiful History program and how well it's worked for us and how much I like it. So that hasn't changed. It has served us well and I do like it. I am just finding myself in um, ever since so switched maths to a more hands-on math that requires me to participate. To do that for both of my older sons, plus I have a kindergarten age homeschool student who I have to do everything with, I am finding myself not having the um, energy to take on a family subject like that. Right now the kids are doing, because we alternated between like history and science usually, my kids are in a science cycle and I was just gonna let them get through that and then you know switch back over to history to the good and the beautiful. And I've been rethinking that plan lately just based on how uh, my energy levels are feeling and you know, you know how that goes. There's only so much of mom to go around. So I have been trying to dip back into the Robinson curriculum methodology. The reason somebody asked me like why I've been asked like why do I use the good and the beautiful history like why do I set you know buy a separate history curriculum when RC is a full curriculum um, or why do I have I advocated for the need of like a spine history spine book and the reason is that, so um, the Robinson curriculum, for I don't know, for those who don't know, was started by a, a man who was his, uh, a widower with children. They, him and his wife had planned on homeschooling and she passed away. And um, so he took over the education of his children and he still had to work um, as well. I think he was able to work from home um, quite a bit but he was working at home and the kids needed to be educated as well. So he came up with, his last name was Robinson, you know, the Robinson curriculum. And I think it's fabulous. I really liked it. I was really drawn to it. The thing is that they lived in Oregon and Oregon has different state guidelines or state mandated subjects than the state I live in of South Carolina. So in South Carolina, I have to have, you know, in the early years, reading, writing, math, science, and social studies from kindergarten, like all the way on. So even though RC is a full curriculum, I didn't see that it had enough like history and science books in the, like where their reading level, level would have like lined up in the early years for me to really even be able to do the RC method really at all, which is independent learning. They're just reading a book. Um, that falls into whatever subject category and then doing their math and their writing. So I just went ahead and just bought a history curriculum. I was like, I'll just do it with them. I like the good and the beautiful because it's family oriented. So you can do various ages together because they have varying notebooks or work, but work sheets that go with it for different levels. So right now, <laughs> even the thought of doing that it sounds like too much to me. Like I don't want to do <laughs> anymore. Like I don't want to have to like set aside time and figure that stuff. I don't know. I don't want to have to do that right now. It, and it was, worked great for us for a while, right? It was fine. But I'm just finding that the demands on me right now are more than they used to be. So I would like to go back to that RC model of the kids reading books that fall into their subjects. Now, like I said, <laughs> my original issue was that I couldn't find readable, you know, at their, at their level material that enough of them in a year to justifiably cover, you know, that subject in my mind. Uh, if, if you were an RC parent and you disagree, I respect your opinion. <laughs> I'm glad it's working for you. It's just how I felt. So I thought, well, I could stick to the RC method basically, but just insert books. So that's what I have been working on for quite a while now in trying some different books out. And I think I'm finally ready to show you guys like what I've come up with. And um, I'd be really interested to know 
what you guys think. <laughs> I haven't started this yet, but you know, I've been in prep mode, in research mode. It was harder than I thought to find I, history readers. Like I didn't want to just get, I, can't, I mean, there's no textbooks that are really, that you can hand a first grader, right? Or a second grader to like read on history. So it was hard for harder than I anticipated to find books that they could read and that, you know, with history, I feel like history can be tricky because there's so much hidden agenda and stuff. And I'm not saying I have, I haven't like proofed all of these books, but just research, I've bought a bunch of books <laughs> and made a plan. And I, anyways, I'm gonna share it with you and I'd love to know your thoughts or if you have any like really like favorite history readers that you, you guys have used. Just leave it in the comment below which what it was so that we can all take a look at it and um let's i'm just gonna turn the camera down and show you what i've been working on okay so i've got my planner out um all right so this is i don't know if you've seen these before or not from me but i have made sequences for language arts math science and bible yeah i added history so i will link to this document in the description box it's just um a google drive document but if you want to see it up close it will be there for you. Everything in it that's underlined like this is actually a link. It's a, it'll take you to these resources so you don't have to track things down all over the internet. Okay, let's get to social studies slash history. First, we'll start in kindergarten. I'm actually doing this with my kindergartner now. We have this book, America the Beautiful. So this is really more of a social studies kind of track. So we have America the Beautiful and famous buildings and landmarks. And this is the one we're working through right now. This has actually been really fun. I just use it as an open and go in that like, I have them do something. We open it up to whatever the first page is. And then we use it to inspire us about what to look up. So usually I just look up something online. I found a free little printout. He colored it. We watched an Otto's Tale on YouTube on the Statue of Liberty. And so I just let it kind of lead us that way. We've been having fun lately. We've been on this page for quite a while on these two pages, America the Creative, because I just have them point to something on here and then we look it up, right? So we have looked up, um, we did several, he did this one, we did several days of looking up musicals online. There are whole musical like Disney musicals on YouTube. You can find them like ones that they put on on their cruises. So we watched Aladdin and Tangled and I thought Tangled was excellent. It like I just couldn't believe what they could do on a stage. Oh, he's been really loving this one. We looked up Georgia O'Keeffe. So I just found a little YouTube video about her. Okay, so we watched a little YouTube video on her and we looked up some images. I just printed them off. This is her portrait. And I just stapled them together and taped them in. And there's one of her up close flowers and one of her landscapes. Isn't that pretty? And then he just drew, oh, he was trying to draw a skull. He saw, she did a lot of like cow um, skulls. <laughs> and of course, somehow guys with guns and explosives ended up in people falling off of rockets. I don't know. <laughs> he's, a, he's a boy, what can I say? <laughs> So we're just using that to kind of guide us and it's been really fun and my uh my other two boys always want to come over and see what we're looking up anyway so really easy and we'll just kind of do the same thing when it gets to the fame when we get through that we'll go through the famous buildings and landmarks maybe show where they are you know use our globe look them up look up any documentaries on them something short and sweet and i usually just have him draw as he's watching something and he likes mixing up that media and we don't do that every single day basically just like when we get a chance to it but it's probably we get around to it like probably twice okay first grade so we were working on his reading right first grade i mean i don't know how strong of readers everybody has um i did pick up 50 famous stories retold because i thought this would be a good one for them to um have read aloud to them and i believe this is also on the rc reading list i remember this story when everett read it he really liked the story about king alfred and the cakes it was pretty funny I thought that that's a good one just to do a read aloud to them. And again, like have them draw or something or look up, you know, try to find something online about the people in the stories. But if your kid can read, I wanted to have some history readers 
And again, like my kids are doing the McGuffey readers. We're, we're doing, that's, that's what we're using at the instructional level for reading. So I wanted something that they, you know, they're gonna be reading these for content purposes, not so much. I don't want them challenged with the reading. I just want them to be able to read them and understand them. And they can't take too long. So let me show you for first grade what I looked for. So I seen what seemed to be the best fit were these step into reading books. And again, there's links to all of those in those documents, but I bought these on Amazon. They were very inexpensive and they're short, right? But when I am filling out my application that I have to do every year for my homeschool association, I can't just say history or world history. I have to give a description of the course. So I'll just be using these titles like Christopher Columbus, Pocahontas. Um, I forget, this is in France. I forget the name of the culture, but I'll look it up. Um, Thanksgiving, Alexander Hamilton, George Washington, Lewis and Clark, um, Harriet Tubman, Abe Lincoln, Alexander Graham Bell, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt. Oh yeah, somehow I accidentally ordered this book twice. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give it to somebody. But anyways, that's what I'm just gonna use for my description, right? I can say all those topics. And I'm just gonna insert this into the, their independent reading time. So I, I still do a structured McGuffey lesson for reading. This is kind of how I depart from RC. I do, you know, um, yeah, like I said, instruction time with the McGuffey readers. Um, doesn't take too long, but then every day they have independent reading time. So once um, he's able to read these on his own, then I'll just give them to him and he'll just read them. I'm not sure exactly how many we'll get through in a year because I'm not gonna have them necessarily read them all back to back but I am going to just insert them maybe like every other book until they're done and then they'll they'll have covered their history stuff for the year also oh I forgot to mention in kindergarten because I wanted the kid I was gonna say I want the kids to some be able to work into history notebooking but I wasn't I'm not too worried about it um in first grade I just want them to be able to like read but I did make this assignment. I think I linked it here and under kindergarten. It's called My History Notebook. It's really short though. It's not really a notebook, but for the kids, they're gonna end up making their own table of contents and they're gonna make a timeline, right? My first timeline of the first five years of their life from birth to age five, right? They're gonna fill in the years. And I have, it comes with like day by day instructions. It looks like a lot, but it's not. It's a lot of repeated stuff. But So they're going to make their timeline of their life one year a day until it's done. And then they've got five notebooking pages where I'm going to go through and like say my kid was born in 2018. I'm going to look up a newsworthy story from 2018 and tell them about it. Like show, you know, something appropriate, obviously. Maybe something was invented. Maybe you know, um, somebody was elected, whatever. And, you know, share that with them and then have them, you know, learn how to title their event, how to write, you know, the exact dates, draw any pictures that they want. And if they can, you know, if they want to write anything, they can write something. But so I wanted to have five historical events to go with the first five years of their life. And this is going to help them understand time and how we represent it on paper. And this is, this is kind of like my precursor to letting them do independent notebooking for history, which I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so there, I just want them to be able to read that stuff and talk about it, first grade. Second grade, I have some different readers. I love when I can get like onto a series I like. <laughs> These ones are all on order, they should be here I don't know, next week or so, but they're all part of the like, if you something um, series. So um, this one is, if you sailed on the Mayflower in 1620, if you grew up with George Washington, if you lived the time of the American Revolution, if you were there when they signed the constitution, if your name was changed at Ellis Island, 
if you lived at the time of the great South San Francisco earthquake. I really, those books look like the right reading ages and simple enough and short enough. Obviously they'll be introduced, all these care, all these people, historical figures and events, like they'll be introduced to them again. But I like that we're building background knowledge. We're meeting our um, state, our mandatory state subjects. <laughs> I also, this year, we had such success with, uh, last year with my second grader reading the Magic Treehouse book set. I mean, he read the, the entire set um, between, I don't know, towards the end of last year and then through the summer. He just read all of them. He was probably reading like one a week. A lot of these are set in historical times and have historical information, but they're super fun to read. So this would be a year where you may want to get them into, into the Magic Treehouse set. This is a link that's set here. I actually have in this document at the end of it is, so that author, she wrote the Magic Treehouse books and then Merlin Mission books. It's the same like main characters. There's two different series. The Magic Treehouse is uh, younger readers. Merlin Mission is like the next step up. I have them listed out by the eras, so like the 1900s or the modern era. These are the Magic Treehouse series that take place then. And these are the Merlin Mission books that take place then. So I have that for four different eras. If that's, if that's helpful information to you, it's helpful to me. I needed it for myself. <laughs> this would be the year that I might start the Moments in History notebook. You don't have to, but you might. So what I did is, uh, I think I've talked about this before, but I made little notebooks for ancient times. I just decided to bind them all together into one. Oh, there's a book list in here. I was just writing out what books that they're gonna be reading and like kind of what order. Okay, so there's ancient times and then there's middle ages and then early modern times, modern times. And they all have the basic same layout, right? You're gonna like come up with a list of books and then we've got events. Like if you want to zoom in on events and timelines that they can make however they want, events and timelines. So as they're reading books and stuff, they can notebook about them as an event or like within a timeline, if there's like a series of events. And then there's each one has like kind of like a book of centuries layout where they've got a time frame and then they can write in the date, the year, you know, and they can write in specific things as they go through. I kind of figured this would be something they did maybe more towards like middle school and probably during their elementary years, they're probably doing more like specific events. But I want them to start seeing how things, I want them to be like noting things down as they do them so they can start seeing how things were like coalescing in history. And that way, if they just had one book like this, I put it onto one, I mean, they can use this for years. And since it's printable, I could always print more events pages or something. But then, you know, as they're going through different times in history, they just flip to the next whatever era that they are reading about. Anyway, so that's what the Moments in History book is. Then, third grade. So if you lived in the days of the night, it's more of those If You series books. If you lived in colonial times, if you grew up with Abraham Lincoln, if you lived when there was slavery, if your name was changed at Ellis Island, if you lived 100 years ago. I just realized I have that on there twice. Okay, I'll take that off. <laughs> Anyways, and so they'd probably be done with the Magic Treehouse books at this point, so they could start into the Merlin Missions books. And again, you'd refer to that list I put in the back of which ones go with which era. And then if they want to continue on their Moments in History notebook, they could. And this is what I love about this is that they can just do this on their own. They can just read them on their own. Okay, fourth grade, I have This Country of Ours, Volume 1. That is this one. So this is um, This Country of Ours by, this is something, Mar yeah, H.E. Marshall. So this lady, I want to say she was an um, Ampleside online um, person, but she went through and basically they're republishing it, but she updated it, you know, gave more um, accurate like tribe names and she just did some different things in here, which I think she updated it. So I think it makes it better. And it came into in two parts. So there's volume one and two. I don't know. For some reason, I think, why am I thinking there might be a volume three coming out? I'm not sure. Okay, see, so this, is, this is cool. So how the Vikings of old sought and found new lands. This is, there's something about Columbus. Columbus, how America was named. How the flag of England was planted on the shores of the new world. How the flag of France was planted in Florida. 
uh, French colony in Florida, Spaniards, um, really going through colonialism, Captain John Smith, yes, Sir Walter Raleigh's Adventure in the Golden West, Sir Humphrey Gilbert, Pocahontas, Bacon's Rebellion, The Coming of the Cavaliers, The Story of the Knights of the Golden Horseshoe, The Story of the Pilgrim Fathers, The Founding of Massachusetts, Harry Vane, like some of these names I don't even know, Anne Hutchinson and the founding of Rhode Island, the founding of Harvard, how Quakers first came to New England, and how Maine and New Hampshire were founded. Good information. So they could probably, by fourth grade, I would think that they could read a little bit of this each day. They could read this in a, in the whole, in a year, you know. But I also got the kids to learn more about Native Americans. Again, which ones do I have already? Okay, <laughs> I've got a journey to Cahokia, A Boy's Visit to the Great Mound City. I saw this book looked really beautiful for one. Look at this. Like, wouldn't you as a kid want to like pour over that picture and see everything that's going on in that village? See what the people are doing. And it's written in story form. So it'll be, I think it's easier. It's easier for all of us to read things in a, in a story form, in a narrative form. See the great mounds. Anyways, I I think this might be my favorite one that I bought. Um, I got a Native American, a kid's guide to Native American culture. I wanted them to have something, right, with current pictures, like real pictures of people today. Then I've got this. DK Eyewitness book, North American Indian. I love to see, like, it's nice to have real pictures. It's nice, I mean, a lot of kids' stories, these little history readers, they're perfect as far as them being, giving information and being like narration form, but it's nice to have real pictures to see what things really look like. I feel like things don't, when you just see them as like drawings, like they doesn't feel real, you know? Like, look, that's a real person. Anyways, the kids have already been pulling this one down and looking at it. Life in a Longhouse Village. I think this is about the Iroquois. Again, another one that had really beautiful illustrations. And this one's just more of a nonfiction informational text, but still, I'm like the kids, this is such a nice bite size. You just read just this layout and do some thinking on it, you know? Okay, so here is If You Lived with the Sioux Indians. This is nice because it's like it all it's like the narrator is talking to the kids you know if you live with the Sioux what kind of house would you live in you would live in a tent called a teepee your teepee would be made of tall wooden poles covered with tough buffalo hides so that draws them in it's like oh they're talking to me and they can put themselves in that situation okay if you lived with the Hopi I tried to get like a sampling of different regions there's so many All you can really do is a survey, but partly I wanted to see, I don't want them to have a stereotype of like all, all the tribes were the same because they obviously were not. And if you live with the Indians of the Northwest coast, of course we're from Oregon, so this is kind of, this is what I think of when I think of Native American culture is things from back home. Also reminds me of Alaska. Okay, so that's fourth grade. Okay, fifth grade. Okay, so first we've got This Country of Ours, volume two. So just continuing on the founding of Connecticut and the, I don't know, I'm gonna say it wrong. Pequot War. <laughs> I know I'm saying that wrong. It sounds, looks like it's French, which I do not speak. And then all down to the war in Canada. It's like it's a bunch of founding of different like states. Declaration of Independence, The Darkest Hour, Trenton and Princeton. Ooh, the story of a great crime. I wonder what that is. A turning point in the world's history. Let's see what year it is. We're talking about 1779. Anyways, we're gonna read that one. If there is a third, I think, I think it, but yeah, this country of ours volume three, cause I thought, I thought that there is one, I think there's one more coming out, but there's no link to it because if there's one more coming out, it has not been written yet. 
I thought it wasn't covering everything that was in the original book, so I thought there must be another volume, but I could be wrong. All right, but also for fifth grade, the Rush Revere, the five book set. I know I've showed it before. So it's these ones, which we always think Rush having a big head is funny. But these are super fun. I, I know I've talked about them before. It's um, a story about Rush Revere and he's got his magical horse Liberty and they can jump back in time and they take like students with them back to, you know, um, times in history, in American history. And yeah, we like these a lot. And it does, you can, there's a website that supports the series. There are study guides and all types of stuff that can go along with it. But they've got American Revolution, the first Patriots, um, Pilgrims, Star Spangled Banner, and Rush Beer in the Presidency. So GW. Um, okay, so sixth grade. I recently found something neat. It is the Boys Guide to the Historical Adventures of G.A. Henty. So we love the G.A. Henty historical fiction books. They are written by a Brit and there's all types of characters. I mean, I think the very first book he wrote, The Catabubastes is set in ancient Egypt, but they, they've got them through all different types of historical eras and different places in the world. And they're a great way to help, you know, learn historical facts by reading a story. But I just recently found this, The Boy's Guide to the Historical Adventures of G.A. Hepti. And what it does is it gives you the um, order, like the chronological order. Right? So there it is, the Catabubastes, 1250 BC. And the next one would be 220 BC, the young Carthan, I can't say this, Carthaginian. <laughs> and then Beric the Briton, and then for the Temple. But so it helps you, and it gives you some, like what the subject material would cover. And then, um, it so you can get an overview of the life of George Alfred Henty with this. Henty wrote from like a biblical basis. And I think this covers, I think it covers 72 of his books, it says. I think there's, he wrote more than that, a few more, but they, this covers 72 of them. So it says, uh, the book, it provides you with both a historical background and a plot summary for each of Henty's novels. This will allow you to key your Henty readings with the rest of your academic studies. You will know, for example, that the Catabubastes should be read in conjunction with your study of Egypt, that Beric the Briton would be a helpful tool for those studying early church history, or that In Freedom's Cause will complement your readings on the history of England and Scotland. The plot summaries provide a helpful overview of the storyline and reveal insights into the moral issues which confront the young protagonists of each novel. So I feel like this is most, this is like really helpful for, especially as parents, like we may buy the books, but we may not have a chance to pre-read them, but we can read, you know, a summary of them. I, I didn't like, obviously I didn't list all the Henty books, but you can find, you know, G.A. Henty historical novels at the robinsonbooks.com. They sell all these beautiful, um, hard, I think they, I think they have hard and softback books, but yeah, the whole, like this whole collection is there. Okay, seventh grade. So I picked up Our Island Story. This is by, you know, H.E. Marshall, the same lady who originally wrote uh, This Country of Ours. And I did want the colored, <laughs> I ordered this from New West Press. I did want the colored um, illustrations if I could. I feel like it makes such a difference to your reading experience. But yeah, if I didn't have them like notebooking, history notebooking in elementary school, I'd for sure have them doing it starting in middle school. So our island, our island story, I feel like they should be able to just make a reading plan and read this throughout the year. And then they could pick a few henty novels, like, you know, maybe two or three henty novels to go along with something that they're interested in here. So they read this, they pick a historical era or something they're interested and then find a matching historical novel, you know, pause this, read your novel, do some notebooking, come back to this, you know what I mean? And then eighth grade. So I have these two books, Everything You Need to Ace American History and World History for middle school. And I want them to just pick, go through these themselves. They're pretty easy reading because they're like notes in note form, but it gives you the subjects And I thought this was nice because we have covered Amer a lot of American history 
and even some um, British history. And it's kind of nice to use these. This is going to be almost like a review, you know, and then plus anything new that comes along and read through these. So I'm like the first half of the year, you know, read American history. The second half of the year, read world history. And again, maybe pick two Henty books for each period uh, or for each spine using your guide and, you know, kind of fill out your notebook. And I want this to be like independent. Okay, I think there's a couple other books I bought, I like randomly bought that I don't see in here. I did buy The Story of Exploration. So I don't know, maybe like around, whenever we were talking, when were we talking about fifth grade would probably be a good time for this. I feel like I learned about, we covered this when I was in fifth grade and I just, it was, I thought it was so cool. Okay, so my phone died when I was making my video. So that's basically all I had to say anyways. So I hope that was helpful for anyone looking for an independent literature-based history homeschool curriculum. Check the description box for everything I showed you today. 